Well, I just wanted to give you guys a little update on what happened with the power pole. All right, let's check it out. All right, so I'm just walking across the deck here. I want to take you guys out here to see the power pole. Uh, we got it all up and going and it's uh, pretty cool. Uh, I think in the last video I was talking about all the stuff that happened with it. Um, in case you guys didn't see that one. Well, Ron accidentally knocked it over because it was in the middle of the driveway, which is a stupid place to put a power pole. Um, he didn't do it. The previous owners of the house had it put there. He's thinking that maybe the driveway wasn't like it is uh, before. That's why it was there. He thought that maybe... Um, they didn't drive on this area until later on and then they did some improvements or something who knows but uh, yeah So it was kind of in the middle of the, the road there and uh, well, you know, he hit it with his van um, And so yeah, so now uh, We had to put in a new one and I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like Okay, as you guys can see um, it's still a work in progress uh, We've got to work on this gravel area. Uh, this was a trench that was dug. If you saw the last video, um, we uh, went from here, which was the original spot for the power pole. And I guess it's about 10 or 15 feet that they put it over to this direction. And as you can see, there's a meter. Thing is up and running. Um, we're just waiting for our last inspection. They did graciously let us have power today. <laughs> So we are washing clothes, um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is it. Uh, it's all put in and it was a, a big, huge ordeal, but it's over with now. And the cool thing is the wires go way, way, way. Well, can't see it in the camera. There they are way up above the driveway, which is nice. We don't have to worry about them. Um, just have to make sure to keep the limbs of the trees trimmed over there and, uh, Ron trimmed some limbs already before they fixed the wires up there yesterday um, so that, uh, you know, there won't be an issue uh, falling on the, the power line or anything like that. And uh, yeah, so this is kind of what it, the whole picture of it looks like here. Kind of messy still, but it's it's from the way it used to be. This is way better. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys what was going on with that. Um, yeah, and I got some, some clips from um, previous stuff uh, while they were working on it, if you guys want to check that out too. And here they are right now. Pretty cool though, you guys. It's looking good. Yeah. And the pole's out of your way too. That yeah. Was the... That was the big part, was getting that pole up. Well, I was scared about that because I'm an old man and even a young couple of young bucks manhandling the poles four or five hundred pounds. Yeah, that's scary. Falls on the ground, you just don't pick one end of it up and right. hike <laughs> it up like a totem pole. Well, the thing that Ron put on the the back of the truck probably helped you guys a lot yeah. to push it up there. So that's cool, you know, because it rolled off and then you can just poof. Well, we manhandled it and got it to the balancing point, and it was just a guesstimate. I wish yeah. I could have been here to to see that, but I had to work. It went right in. Well, then we put that four foot piece of wood going up. Yeah. Because as he backed the truck up, I was afraid it wasn't going to go in the hole. I didn't want it yeah. going off. How it close? won't do any good to call now because it'll still take us two days. We might as well finish up whatever oh, okay. today or well, in the morning yeah, and then I... call, and then they'll be out the next day. So it doesn't matter. They, if they're not busy, they'll, they'll fit you in. Well, they said anything after three. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, their excuse. call before three. But. Yeah. Now let's get it all hooked up how you want, and then that'll give me a chance to raise this grade too. I'd like spread it out a little bit, and maybe even put some gravel on top of it. Ugh, that stuff's just so gloppy. Oh, it's just like, terrible working in the mud. That's it's, not mud. That's clay. <laughs> that's like you know, mud, clay, rocks. <laughs> the whole thing is. Shovel full weighs, you know, 20 pounds. Well, if Ron and I ever want to build a cob house, I know we've got the stuff to do it here. Holy moly. It's like the perfect kind of clay to build a freaking mud hut. <laughs> okay. 
blobby stuff. So you guys didn't need that cement piece right there then, huh? No, we put it in, but it's too tall. I needed yeah. half of one. Half of one. Oh, okay. So you got to put a masonry blade on a skill saw and then pour water on it. And yeah, all that crap. Cut all the way around. I didn't want to get this one. If we get it too much higher, uh, the pipes are too far down underneath. And, of course, yeah. any hole in the ground is going to fill with water. So we got a bunch of gravel. We pulled it up to four inches. That's what I was looking for grade over there. Cool. But I told her on the guys complaining or making a big point about 18 inches from the top of the pipe to grade. A lot of people do an 18 inch trench, mm -hmm. but the code says it's from the top of the pipe. Well, your 18 inch trench with a two inch pipe turns into 16 from the top of the pipe to grade. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's what's do, two inches? Yeah. Put <laughs> shit on here and put gravel on it and try not to walk. You know, yeah. That way it will be grade. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, just push it into that hole a little bit and then just throw some gravel on there. Yeah, but that'll be great, so. Yeah. Be perfect. And then, yeah, the inspector will see, oh, yeah, they are building it because we're, we're just barely 16 inches to the old gravel. So okay. somewhere this mud has got to bring us up two inches or road base. It's hot, tall enough over here, but yeah. the bar in the box is actually a little low. See this bump right here, this bump where the grass is. Yeah. That can just get kicked into the hole to but you're gonna be out here once in springtime. Once it dries up, you'll be able to scrape it and make smooth it. it out and make it so it doesn't look wavy gravy. Yeah, make it nice. <laughs> cool. When I was on clan dike and stuff, I met Wavy Gravy. He was sitting at the table next to me over on the hog farm. No kidding. <laughs> I looked at him. I didn't really meet him, but I was standing there talking. I maybe talked to him, said hi or something. Right. He does, he's just. He does. Oh, that's cool. He's a nice old guy. I've actually met him too. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Yeah, he's, he's pretty awesome. I've gone to his house actually met, for like, a birthday party before. We met some of the 49ers. Their practice field was where we played softball. And so I met Joe Montana and all these other guys, but the. The only famous guy I met was Colonel Sanders, the original Colonel Sanders. Cool. <laughs> he was uh, walking across the street and coming over to the Dairy Queen where I was eating. <laughs> and I said, look, they got some guy dressed up like Colonel Sanders. <laughs> and Mr. Bowman, who was a southerner, he's the owner of the Dairy Queen. He says, Jim, that's no character. He goes, that's the real deal. That's cool. <laughs> Mr. Sanders himself. <laughs> and I got to meet him when I was 16, 17 years old. I thought it was pretty good myself. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Of course, back then, I never, never thought to take a picture with the guy or anything. Yeah. A lot of people didn't have cameras either. I didn't have yeah. a camera until freaking, I don't know, about 10 years ago. <laughs> It's a Five cheesy ago, one. I guess when I got sick, I bought a bought a digital camera before I had a all I had was a funky cell phone. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I used to buy disposable cameras sometimes, yeah, that's but all, yeah, everything I never years really ago. had them. But I bought that cost me a hundred bucks or more for a camera and a high a card with a lot of memory, and I don't <laughs> even think I took a picture with it. <laughs> Right after that, I got a, a real cell phone. My daughter got me a real cell phone. That's cool. I used to have 35 millimeters. Yep. Made money with it once in a while. Well, uh, back in. The... Okay, so it's looking good. The hole's still here, but that's because the inspector has to come and check stuff out. But uh, he's got to be able to see, I guess, the pipes down inside and the grade of the hill and all that kind of good stuff. And here's the pole. And there's the, the box that goes on the pole. And as you can see, it goes all the way up with the electrical pole. I guess that's what that metal pole is. It, I guess that's what you call it. The electric pole. I don't know. 
the telephone pole looking thing is just to hold up all this stuff. That's basically all it is. It doesn't really do anything else. It protects it a little bit and holds it up. And then underneath this box is our generator. And it's still temporarily tied into the house until uh, they say it's okay to turn the power on. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, that's what's going on. That's what we got going here. Pretty crazy, pretty nasty, dirty, muddy job, especially in the winter time. But it's the best time if you got to dig in California, especially in this clay soil. Um, you rather would have mud than than the hard pack stuff. So, but yeah, I think it's looking good. The guys did a good job. All the guys, Ron and his kids and his friends, they all did this. I didn't do any of it. <laughs> All I did was help pay for some of it. That's it. So it's looking pretty good. All right. Okay. So we made it through all that. Uh, I think it was probably about a month, month and a half where we didn't have uh, regular electricity. But that's okay because my van over here helped out. Um, it was critical in keeping our phones charged and being able to use uh, the computer and printer. Um, the generator, the 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 power on, on one of those isn't exactly clean all the time. Um, it likes to surge and things like that. So we were afraid to use a computer on it. Um, yeah. And just a few other things, um, you know, just having the Lucy lights with the solar, their, their little, uh, built in solar panels helped and having like oil lanterns and candles and all that kind of stuff. And, um, here pretty soon I want to do like a video on, uh, preparedness, for anybody that has to live through power out outages or even people that are just on the road and camping, you know, just give them some, you know, lighting ideas and things like that. Cause, um, every time you have to do this, you learn a lot more. So, um, hopefully, you know, you guys can get some, you know, information out of this and it might help you guys too. If you're beginning homesteaders or something like that, um, you know, there's just a lot of different options out there for lighting and charging and things like that. And there's some products out there that I want, want to get a hold of and try myself that I haven't yet. And, um, hopefully we can put those up here too, as well. There's a company called BioLite where, um, they've got like this little, um, device where you can burn it's like a stove and you burn twigs in it and it makes electricity too it'll like charge your your phone and little battery packs and stuff like that um, and while it's keeping you warm and helping you to cook food so I want to kind of try one of those things I think that'd be kind of neat on a camping trip or even just out here in the yard just for fun in the summertime if I can get a hold of one of those I'd like to put that up to show you guys what you know those things can do um, there's just all kinds of fun things that uh, you can do to just make your life a little bit easier if you don't have any electricity for whatever reason whether you're living in a van or a homestead or whatever and yeah so um, that's why I'm putting this kind of stuff up on my channel because I think it's good content for everybody to just you know be able to know and like I've said before, previously um, we have our power go out on the average of at least once a month sometimes twice a month in this area uh, especially in the summertime so it's just important to be prepared and have all your your ducks in a row so I'm gonna try um, to maybe put some of that up on the channel and get Ron to help me out with that maybe too so I think that would be a really fun thing and I hope you guys enjoy you know the the content that we're putting out and uh, thank you so very much for watching and um, have an awesome day guys keep the lights on all right talk to you later bye